Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is the second play-in match here of the Inner Geekdom Division. The winner of this match will officially be put in the Inner Geekdom Tournament to face the former two-time Inner Geekdom champion, Mike Kalinowski. I am joined today by the one and only Mark Ellis. Thank you for remembering my name, Christian. Now, I have a different name today, Chief Stearns. $10 goes to you right now if you can tell me what movie did we have a police officer named Chief Stearns. The Simpsons movie. You are incorrect. Looking for Ninja Turtles 1990. Always good to be with you, Christian. And what a matchup today. You talk about the thankless task of facing Mike Kalinowski. Ironically, that's going to be good news for either one of these gentlemen because that means that they have won here today. And both of them are bringing quite a lot to the table. Well, there's a lot in general about this match because the quirky Mercs, they need a win here. They need a desperate win here. And the Burning Droogs, they need a win as well. Brandon, Hannah, and Saul will be playing very soon, but this is the first match. This is the first match of the Droogs. They need something inside of this Inner Geekdom tournament, and so do the Quirky Mercs. Very interesting to me that that Koi Jandrew decided to put both the real rejects in the Inner Geekdom. I didn't know that these guys know the Inner Geekdom that well. I guess we're going to find out today exactly what they know. It's an interesting pairing, Christian, because it does make sense to me from the standpoint of this is that John and Greg of that team, they know each other very well. I don't know how much they know about inner geekdom stuff, but if you know each other, if you have a friend and somebody to be in the foxhole with, you can quiz each other constantly. So maybe that friendship is going to blossom into at least one of them becoming a titan in the world of inner geekdom. But you talk about titans on the other end of the spectrum, you have Warfather. Warfather is a dangerous character all the way around because he is now at least a double threat. He debuted in the Inner Geekdom division. He had a nice showing. Didn't win the match, but it was a fatal four-way, I believe, and he, and he did really, really well. Uh, just didn't come out with the victory. Then he plays Claudia Dolph in singles, and it looked like he was done. It was going to be a TKO. Well, he said, uh-uh, called upon the Schmodown gods, if you will. They helped out the Warfather, and he won the match. And the dangerous thing about the Warfather is he just has really seemed to i mean he's already a big personality his personality went to a scary level when he joined forces with burnett it really did i mean not only would he probably make a great rebounder but i think he is going to be one of these dual or even triple threats that we've seen in the schmodown in previous years he could be one of the best of the bunch you pair him with a manager like robert meyer burnett who i've always said i've never met a bigger star trek fan that hates all the star trek movies but right. as far as a manager goes robert meyer burnett look the guy is nothing if not passionate christian so can his nerdy passion steer warfather ahead of greg alba today we're about to find out we're going to find out. We're going to find out exactly how we got to this play in match. Here we go. What the comics and movies have in common? The Inner Geekdom. Greg Alba knows his Inner Geekdom. People are sleeping on Greg Alba. I knew going into this that a certain amount of perspective, a certain amount of shaping of each of my people is going to reshape the whole faction, and this is just the beginning. And frankly, between myself, John Humphrey, William Bibiani, Mara Kanapi, there are so many people to guide that young man to the number one spot. He and John Humphrey will both be number one, because that's how math works. Well, 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 Schmodown fans, once again, it is I your captain and the war father himself the war father was getting a little bit stir crazy being in warranting <laughs> yeah <laughs> and nothing beats a warranting more than smashing the skulls of a few geeks <laughs> and my first opponent is greg alba oh mr alba we're going to have a good time I thought I was just backup. I, I didn't think I would get into the uh, Inner Geekdom. Now, I know what you're saying. The Inner Geekdom is so much more than just comic book movies. I hear you. It's also Star Wars and Star Trek films and a little bit of Spider-Man because, frankly, the alphabet. Oh, it's going to be a massacre. And then you'll just be the first rung after bloody rung until I take the tournament win. Uh, I'm so gonna beat you with my Wikipedia knowledge. What did I agree to do with 
Thank you once again to the brilliant Nerd Chronic, Mr. Eric. He, he Look, what a great job he does each and every uh, match with these great promos. So thank you to Eric. Follow him over on Nerd Chronic on his YouTube channel and everything else, too. Um, but we are here now. We are hyped up. We're ready to go and to see who's going to go a little bit further. Will it be the Drukes? Will it be the Quirky Mercs? To find out, to find out, we're going to bring in said managers, Robert, Meyer, Burnett, and... Boys, Andrew, there you go. Gentlemen, let's start off with you, the captain. You've got, listen, like I said, there have been many people, myself included, who said, how much does Burnett really care about this thing? Does he really know what he's doing? I said you'd come in dead last. Well, you spit right in my face, and you've done a lot. You've made a lot of moves. People are now calling you an evil genius. You, you made a trade for Ken Knapsack. You you wound up you getting, you traded away Josh Quavedo. That seemed to work out in your favor. And you've got Brandon Hanna with an upcoming match here, too. How are you feeling going into this match with the Warfather? I am feeling like I've got big brass balls and they're clanking away. You know, just like you pointed out that everybody counted me out. They said, I knew nothing about the game. They said, I wasn't paying attention. They said, I just didn't care. That is untrue. Warfather today, by the way, one of my draft picks, I could see he was a rookie who started out, had a good match, came in, and what did he do? What did he do for me? In the clutch, which is something Andrew Guy could never do, he came in and won that match against Claudia Dolph. I am so excited. You know what? If your name isn't Jessica Alba, nobody cares about any Alba. And you know what? Warfather's here to dispatch Greg Alba, and I can't wait. I can't wait to watch it because because Warfather, man, like you guys astutely pointed out, Warfather is a triple threat. He's going to be a threat. I look forward to him. Look, I don't know why he's in the same bracket with Brandon Hanna. It makes me a little worried. I was hoping they would face each other in the finals. But that's all right. I hope we're all going to have a good match. All right. Well, Koish Andrew, uh, you are much big win here you would need it you would need this to get two people inside of the tournament if greg can do it remember to remind everybody this match is worth two points because it is a play-in match with an additional point if there is a knockout or a tko but coy the quirky mercs have had a lack of uh you know matches and 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 wins have been scarce but you know this is the tournaments have been something to to instill hope i guess so with this match, I mean, I'm looking forward to the three because I feel like the TKO is inevitable. I, I think Warfather's fantastic. I'm a fan of the man. But Greg Alba is such a slept on force in the Schmodown. He is always the guy I need to pinch. He talks about this stuff constantly in the real world of day to day life. I can't get him to shut up about the inner geekdom. That is the excitement I have for this is it, I get to show off to the people just how much Greg Alba knows. He is more than just entrances. He is more than just quirky. He is an actual mercenary in this game. And my faction is about family. My faction is about keeping people together. All the droogs do is trade people in and out. These are not items to me. These are people. I'm excited to show you guys why I've kept my 10 together. I drafted six. I didn't draft 10. I wanted to keep six people. I didn't want to move them around. I was very cautious with who I brought in as we went along. I don't believe in getting rid of players. These are people. These are family. I'm excited to show you why I picked them, why I haven't need to make any changes, even with the, the, the faction not allowing a lot of movement, with us not getting to play a lot because of the world ending. We're still doing okay. We haven't lost that much. We haven't played that much. But as we play along, I have no doubts in my team. I'm so excited to show people what we got. You know, Christian, both of these managers, we've seen live in person how long they can go on for on stage talking about their respective factions. So I have a challenge for each one of you, gentlemen, in as concise a phrase as possible, starting with you, Robert, then going to Koi. How far can your competitor here today go in the Inner Geekdom Tournament? Well, listen, I don't want to step on Brandon Hanna's toes, but you know what? If it isn't Brandon Hanna, it's going to be the Warfather. He is hungry. He is ready. He is frosty. I beat Mike Kalinowski with one word, puddin, and that's what every single one of these competitors is to me. I have no doubt in my rejects. They are going all the way. It's happening. He used the P word, Christian. Sure did, and I'm sure somewhere Mike Kalinowski just started twitching. All right, I would like to thank you guys. Good luck to both Robert Meyer Burnett and Koi Jandrew. Mark, they both want it. You can tell both managers doing a great job this season, but not about them anymore. It's about our two competitors. Are you ready? 
I am ready to go. Christian Chief Stearns is on duty. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Introducing first, representing the quirky Mercs, making his inner geekdom debut. Of course, this is what he wants to be called. Greg Idris Elba. There he is. Well done. Well done. What's uh, up, people? Nice to see you. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Elba doing? and Alba are the same last name. Apparently. Yeah, Greg, did you have to answer a trivia question in a movie theater correct to get that t-shirt? Uh, I, I talked to my cousin, Idris Elba personally and he gave it to me himself so i just lucked out well we you, obviously we know you like to push the buttons it's uh it's that's fun that's fair but anything first of all what do you think about your uh your competitor here the warfather i thought i was versing eric zipper this whole time so i'm excited to verse the warfather today <laughs> So you think that Warfather <laughs> might be an easier task than some other competitors in the Inner Geekdom tournament? Is that what you're saying here today, Greg? Uh, I I would say so, I mean he might be exactly the same. I'm glad that what we're doing this via um, over the internet because in person I actually I actually sat next to Warfather during the Schmodown Awards. Uh, didn't talk to him once because he's just so intimidating in person. So over here. I feel like I can be an opposing threat just equally. In person, I would cower away. So this well, is going to be good. Yeah, he is. He's like eight foot three or something. All right. Well, listen, Greg, yeah. going to put you in the uh, waiting room for the moment as we get to your opponent. Good luck. Okay. Thank you. Christian, that was like every classic internet troll saying, hey, I'm safe from a keyboard so I can go after them here. And so I think Greg Alba may be playing with all the confidence in the world here today. Well, he certainly is. I wonder if he would have used the Idris nickname if Mark Andreco was next to him. <laughs> And his opponent, representing the Burning Droogs, with a record of zero wins, one defeat in the Inner Geekdom division, this is Warfather! <laughs> yes. Warfather, it is always uh, it is always fun to watch. It, 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 there's there's no doubt you have made an impact in this league with your first appearance last season, and of course this season with your big singles victory. What is it about you and Robert Meyer Burnett? Why do you you seem to really respond to this man? What is? It? I think it's because we're both large and loud. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Christian, I, I don't have a, a question about the match per se for Warfather, but I do want to ask Warfather, once this whole situation in the world is over, how what's your fee for just sitting front row at a comedy club so I can get those kind of laughs going? Oh, for you, my dear war son, I'll show up for free. <laughs> I love it. All right, well, listen, the Warfather is here. We're going to bring Greg Alba back yeah, to over here. the room. Uh, all right. So, Mark, <laughs> our competitors over here. are here. And round number one is about to begin the rules of number one, my friend. I mean, you look at the four of us. Are there really any rules that can contain this matter? Not. Probably not, but we'll attempt it anyway. Gentlemen, round number one. This is the Inner Geekdom format. So remember, it's an endurance trial for round number one. Ten questions wow. in various worlds of Inner Geekdom know-how. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. Here's how it's going to work. As soon as Christian or myself asks a question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer with whatever utensil you have handy, with whatever writing tablet you have handy. Once we address you by name or nickname, if we don't know your actual name, please show what you wrote to the camera the same time you verbalize it into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor that you have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the three round match. If you're not sure you heard a question right, you want us to repeat it, buy yourself more time, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge to be issued by your manager at any point throughout the match. Best of luck to both you crazy kids. All right, we start with Greg Alba. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm Black Superman, baby. Let's do this. And Warfather, are you ready? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> and let's get ready to schmodown. All right, here we go, guys. Round number one. Question number one in the realm of the MCU. 
Who played James Rhodes in 2008's Iron Man? Ooh, all the way back to the one that started it all. Did you know we were in for such a wild ride for the next decade when you saw that movie, Christian? No, not, not all the way through. Five, four, three. What do I do with my hands? Ooh. Keep them. One. Pen down, please, Warfather. Pens down, hands up, and we start with Alba. Next time, Terrence Howard. That is correct, and Warfather. I put down not Don Cheadle. I was looking for the name. All right. So <laughs> no, knowing that, we start with Greg Alba with a one to nothing lead over the Warfather. Mark, next question. That's right. Both competitors correct, but we can only give points to one of you. Your next question is in the world of Star Wars Galaxy way far away. The question, you can phrase this a couple different ways. We need, what reason did Han give the general for needing to leave the rebel base on Hoth? What was the reason? I like this question. I like it too. Christian. Yep, writers working really hard. Thank you to both uh, PJ and Chris Galiski and team for crushing it. And fine. They're making now us repeat, look- Repeat the question. First one. Certainly do that. In the world of Star Wars, what reason did Han give the general for needing to leave the rebel base on Hoth. Greg Galba using his first uh, of three JTE rules. That's right. The answer, same as Alf, to get a pack of gum. And we go with five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, pens down. And we start with the Warfather. Uh, escape Jabba? Escape Jabba is not correct. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I had something similar, so Jabba doesn't capture him. Jabba after him. <laughs> Looking for... Go ahead, Mark. Uh, it's very close. It does involve Jabba, but he needed to pay off Jabba. Ah. He's actually worried about the bounty hunter, but the reason he gave was he needed to go pay his debt to Jabba. The that's so right. that's what kind of game this is, huh? Oh. Uh, right. but, but Elba and Alba are the same last name. Okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. <laughs> We would have accepted the job. Won the match. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all, right. all right. Here we go. All right. Question number three. It's from Middle Earth. In which Middle Earth set film will you hear the following quote? A red sun rises. Blood has been spilled this night. And we can just go subtitle. We don't need the full. Yeah. We don't need the the. The real McCoy, I guess, is what they'd say. All right. I remember the Hatfields and McCoys had an issue a long time ago. Yeah, we get it. Five, Civil four, War. three, two, one. Pens down, everybody. Warfather, pens down. And we start with Greg. Is it Return of the King? That is incorrect. Damn. And who next? Warfather. Two Towers. Yeah. Two Towers? Is correct. Yeah. Is correct. I can guess. So Warfather, okay. tying it up. <laughs> tying it up here. All right, next question. We are tied at one as we move to your fourth question, and that is in the world of DC movies. DC movies, your question. Who plays twins Angela and Isabel Dodson in the 2005 film Constantine? Ooh. Christian, yes. the first time you saw Constantine was? The last time I saw Constantine. <laughs> did you go to the theater? Did you, have you ever seen it? Five, yeah, I did. Four. Theater? Three, two. One, yes, the theater, Mark. All right, pens down, please. And Warfather. Uh, the Olsen twins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should give them a point. <laughs> Can't do that. Incorrect. And Greg. I don't know. Rachel Weiss. That is correct for yes. one point. So, Greg Alba. But you know, listen, the Olsen twins, I mean, that's a great answer. Yeah. Style points. I mean, yeah, style points. All right. Here you go. Next question. Here. Next question. Marvel. Who plays Captain George Stacy, Gwen's father in The Amazing Spider-Man? Still like that movie a whole lot, Christian. First one, yeah. 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 I probably don't need to revisit the second one. I think no, I you definitely don't. Drank a lot of Kool-Aid before that movie. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we start with Greg. Dennis Lear. De Dennis Leary. Yes, and Warfather. <laughs> Dennis Leary. Yes, it is. 3-2. Greg Alba keeps his lead. 3-2. Next question, Mark. We have reached the halfway point of round number one, gentlemen. Your next question. In the world of Harry Potter, 
Harry Potter. It's a good, there's and a, a good wizarding thing. world therein. The question, what is Hagrid's first name? <laughs> no idea that guy had, had a first or a last name. I had no idea what it was. Nah. <laughs> Don't go to Christian. My, uh, my daughter might know, but not me. Five, four, three. I like Butterbeer. One. Pens down, please. And the uh, Warfather. Alphonse. <laughs> 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 no. Uh, <laughs> Greg. If you ding me on spelling, I'm going to get pissed. All right. I got Rubius. That is correct. <laughs> Al host. Al we have a, uh, maybe there should be a rule where if you make the host break out laughing three times in one round you get a point alphonse uh, alphonse capone and alphonse hagrid are my two favorite characters <laughs> all right let's <laughs> that's good all right next one star trek <laughs> that's a, that alphonse got me star trek which star trek film has the final appearance of leonard nimoy as spock Christian Harloff having a tough time composing himself. I love stupid names. You just, you, you got really hit in the kidneys with that one, huh? Right, and you got, we you got are we talking entire franchise? Like all the films? Yeah, I'm, uh, thank you for the question. Yes. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah, which Star Trek film has the final appearance of Leonard Nimoy as Spock in all the films? <laughs> See, the guy even gave you a freebie, boys. He's uh -huh. loopy. This, yeah. this Christian fella, he's lost his mind. Five, four. <laughs> Three, two, one, and we start with Greg. Star Trek Into Darkness? Yes, it is. One point. And Warfather? Star Trek Into Darkness. Yes. Okay, five, three. Five, three. Next question, Mark. It's question number eight. It is question number eight, as Alba enjoys a two-point lead over Warfather. This category would be the DCEU. Those are great films. Great catalog. The director's cuts are even better. Your question. In Batman v Superman, what is used to kill Doomsday? I don't, I don't know that I'd be up for that challenge, Christian. I might just walk the other way. Oh, you mean the answer for the question, or in general? I'm, I'm saying that I'm not capable of killing anybody Five, named Doomsday. Four, three. I don't think you are either. One pens down and Warfather. Kryptonite spear. Yes, sir. And Greg. It is, in fact, a kryptonite spear. You got it. 6-4. Six, 6-4 four. Six, four for our next question here. This is uh, question number nine. Heroes and villains, gentlemen. Nice. Heroes and villains. Who played Spawn in 1997's Spawn? Oh, oh, beep that one, Eric. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> And I had, I had a Roka moment. Four, three. We take that Alphonse two, point away. One. Pens down. And Greg. Michael Jai White. Yes. One point. And Warfather. Michael Jai White. Got it. Seven five. Seven five. So now we got to get to our final question here, Mark. Good round so far for both Warfather and Greg Alba. Seven to five going into the final question. That's right, Christian. Both competitors seem to have found their footing in this new virtual realm, and they're answering questions at an amazing clip. Your final one comes in the category of mixed bag. Reach in there. Could be anything. And what we're pulling out, oh, it's a fedora, it's a whip, and it's Indiana Jones movies. So your question. Shoot. You worried me with fedora. <laughs> <laughs> the character named Sulla appears in how many Indiana Jones films? One of the best characters in Indiana Jones, in my opinion, Christian. Well, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you on that one. And five. He was great in all Four, three movies. Two, one, pens down, and we start with Warfather. Three. Incorrect. And Greg? Two. That's correct. Greg and Alba, big shot there as we end the round. Greg only misses two and finds himself with a three-point lead over the Warfather, eight to five. All right, we're going to bring in both the managers here as we get to the second round. Mark, you want to tell us what the rules of round number two are? Here's how round number two works. It's the wheel round. It is an electronic wheel, but we assure you it harbors no bias, and it is an impartial judge, jury, and could be executioner. 
Each competitor gets a spin at the wheel. Once they settle on a category, they're going to hear five questions in said genre. Each question's worth two points. There is no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer to the question, ask us for multiple choice. At that point, the value of the question goes down to one point. The way a steal works is if your competitor doesn't know it, you can try to jump in and answer the question once prompted by either Christian or myself. Christian, it looks like Greg Alba enjoying a three-point lead over Warfather is going to be spinning that wheel first if he wants to. It's his decision, and I will remind everybody watching, there is a sponsored wheel slice today. It is scores and soundtracks. So if either competitor spins scores and soundtracks and settles on that category for the questions, we will say the name of that patron. Thank you to all of our movie trivia schmodown loyal Patreon supporters. All right, I'm going to drop Robert Meyer Burnett and the Warfather out for a moment. Give Coy and Greg an opportunity to speak about Thanks. what they want to do. You have about a minute, and you have to make your decision. What do you think, Coy? Tell me what to do, Coy. Uh, the three-point lead I feel good about, so I'd say if you're feeling like you want a second to breathe, let them go ahead. But if you want to keep the momentum, like whether or not how, – how do you feel pace-wise? If you feel the pace, you want to keep riding it out, I'd say take the lead. But uh, if you want to, you know, breathe a second, I'd let them go. How do you feel? I feel good. Let's do Spin this. it, man. <laughs> Sorry. Do I gotta it. stop swearing. Let's freaking <laughs> do this. You're gonna go. You're gonna, Let's you're, fast and furious do this. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're gonna spin then, Greg? Sure, I'll spin. Why not? All right, Greg's it. gonna spin. All right, thank you, Coy. Remember, Coy, you can communicate on the side there with Greg for this round, and let's bring the Warfather back. All right, here we go. Here is the spin for Greg Alba. Use your mind, Greg. Spin that to whatever slice you want. Oh, this is so much better than in person. The Wizarding World. Spin again, please. Spin again. Spin <laughs> away. I can tell you yeah. the writers are probably happy about that. All right. I didn't. I didn't see a lot of uh, Harry Potter memorabilia behind Greg, Christian. Not today. Oh. Ooh. Coy, big, big. Can I talk with Coy. Hey. Can I talk with Koi? Yeah, we can bring Koi in again. Let's let's drop out Warfather again. Bring back Koi again, guys. You have a minute on the clock starting now. Koi, I think we should go with Wizarding World now. I'm just joking. Uh, let's, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I'm kind of feeling like MCU or DCEU right now. Okay, so I'd say the MCU is going to be a lot. Uh, deeper of a, a pool because it's more films, but I find that the things are more approachable on the surface of your mind. The DCEU tends to be uh, really erroneous deep cuts because those movies are written by a, a series of 100 monkeys. So I would say uh, if you have studied the DCEU in a place of comfort, go that direction. But if you want to go with your overall comfort, I agree with MCU. What do you feel? What do you think is deeper? Uh, I would say... <laughs> I would say the MCU is more comfortable, but if you've been studying DCEU more, do you, did you hear him saying? 10 seconds. Uh, Go with your gut. First thing that pops in your head. That MCU. Right. MCU. There it is. Okay, there it All is. Right. All right, MCU it is. All right, Coy, thank you. Going to drop you out, bring back the Warfather. MCU, now, Warfather, remember, please put your hands up during this round. You will be able to steal if Greg Alba misses. So same thing, Greg, please keep your hands up, and here we go. Here, You do not need to write anything down. Get the prison in here, man. <laughs> All, right. All right, so, Greg, I'll be asking you the questions here. You see the MCU, is that that's accurate? Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Here's the first one. In Thor... What does the Frost Giant call Thor to instigate the fight on Jotunheim? Multiple choice. Is it A, sweetheart, B, little princess, C, little daughter, D, coward? Little princess? Correct for one point. All right, next question here. Question number two. Who plays Dr. Abraham Erskine, the creator of the Super Soldier. Family Tucci. Well, this, you weren't told this, but please let us finish the entire thing before you answer for those audio listeners, please. Sorry. All right. Who plays Dr. Abraham Erskine, the creator of the Super Soldier program in Captain America, the first Avenger? That would be Stanley Tucci, Christian. For two points. Thank you, Greg. Uh, here you go. This is your third question. During the pursuit through the library in The Incredible Hulk, what does Bruce do with his USB drive 
containing his experiment data. He swallows it. For two more points, that is correct. All right. What film marks the screen debut of Phil Coulson? Oh, that is uh, Iron Man 1. Correct, for two points. All right, here's your last question here, Greg. Good round thus far. In Thor. Oh, sorry. That's the same question I asked you. Right? I'll answer it again. No. <laughs> okay. All right. In Iron Man 2, what element not only powers his suit, but is also poisoning Tony? <sighs> Multiple choice, please. Is it A, cadmium, B, palladium, C, lead, D, selenium? Is it palladium? For one more point, Greg Alba with a hell of a round there. Five questions, sees himself up now 16 to five over the Warfather. Chose MCU, looked to be the right move. Didn't give his opponent any opportunities to steal their mark. Very impressive, Christian. A, a possible 10 points there, and he got eight of a possible 10 because he did check to multiple choice twice. It seemed to be the right play because Warfather just it did the hardest thing for Warfather to do, which is be silent during Greg answering the questions. He had no opportunity to steal. Hell of a round two by Alba. All right, so we're going to drop Greg out at the moment. We're going to bring in Robert Meyer Burnett here for the Warfather as we get to the Warfather spin. Here we go. I like the sound effect. Anybody, is that just me? It's real, Mark. It's a real wheel. Here it is. It is? Star Trek. Uh, I'm going to say spin again. Yeah, I was even. I was going to suggest you spin again, too, sir. All right, here we go. We're spin away from that. This is not Robert Byron Burnett. Obviously, can't answer the question. Yeah. I, I wish he could. Yeah, yeah. That, that sound is not the wheel. It's Robert Meyer Burnett's heart breaking into a thousand pieces. DCEU, the DCEU is what we land on here. So, all right, uh, all right. Once again, we're going to put you outside there. We're going to bring back Greg Alba here. Greg, remember you can steal here should the War Father miss, sure. but. Got to keep the hands up, both of you guys. And here we go, Mark, for the Warfather, DCEU. All right, Warfather, in the world of DCEU, which Greg Alba almost took. Seems like he made the right decision with MCU. Now you get the DCEU, and your first question of five for two points. In Wonder Woman, what ancient language does Diana stump Samir with when they first meet? Themiscarian. That is incorrect for a big two point steal. Greg, do you have the answer? <laughs> Aramaic. Sorry, can't accept that. We're looking for ancient Greek. Oh my God, no way. That's so <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, follow your uh, doctor. All right, Mark, question number two. Question number two, as we go back to Warfather, still looking for his first points in round number two. What is the name of Barry Allen's father in Justice League? Multiple choice, please. I can provide that. Is it A, Henry, B, Jeffrey, C, Thomas, or D, Samuel? Uh, Henry. That is correct for a point. Warfather is on the board in round number two. Do the math for me here, Mark. How many? Points? It's sixteen to six now. Sixteen six. Okay, so he's so he's in he's within range. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Question number three. Question number three. As Warfather makes it a ten point game, staying with the film Justice League, Barry claims that one of his special skills is playing what classical instrument? Multiple choice. Is it A, the woot, B, the violin, C, the clarinet, or D, the viola? Uh, violin. Sorry, you, can you give me that Violin. Again? Violin. Violin is B. Correct. Okay. So, Greg, for the steal, I'm going to give you your multiple choice options once again. Is it A, loot, B, violin, C, clarinet, or D, viola? Clarinet. Sorry, looking for the instrument that shares its name with great twins pitcher Frank Viola. Viola. All right. So oh. that, that is now that is number that is question number 
Three, so here's number four, Mark. Here's question number four for Warfather. It desperately needed two points for him. Your question, in the village of Velb, what had Steve Trevor not seen Charlie do in years in 2017's Wonder Woman? Multiple choice. Is it A, play piano, B, dance, C, sing, or D, pray? Play piano. That is incorrect for a one point steal. Greg, your options. Is it A, play piano, B, dance, C, sing, or D, pray? Is it sing? It is sing for a one wow. point steal. All right, so this is an interesting situation that we're in right now because it is 17 to six with the final question. If the Warfather can either get a multiple choice one point or a or a, a answer with the two points, then he gets himself into round number three. However, if he misses this question at all, Greg Alba will win via KO and the Quirky Mercs will find themselves with a big three points and Greg will be in the tournament. That's two points. Right. A three lot riding points. on this question, three, Christian. Three points. It'll be three points if it's a knockout. A lot riding on this question, Christian. And that final question in round number two is, what was the name of the member of the Suicide Squad with fire-based abilities? Uh, napalm. And your winner, by way of knockout, he is Greg Idris Elba. Well done, Greg Elba with a big knockout, picking up three points there for the quirky Mert. Congratulations, Warfather. I'm going to put you in the waiting room for the moment while I bring back a good fight there, Warfather. Let's put in uh, Koi. Look at this, the real rejects. Who would have thought that Greg Alba comes out? I, I thought, I thought. You thought. Comes <laughs> out. Now question, what's John going to do? Can these guys play an inner geekdom? Well, one half showed that he could. Knockout victory. Get yourself. You needed these three points, and boy, did you Ooh. get them. And Greg Alba is in the tournament. Uh, yeah. I said at the beginning of the round, I really wanted a three-pointer, and uh, I both played valiantly, and both were incredible. But my God, am I happy I let him choose between MCU and DCEU. Both were, I, the way that landed, <laughs> when I look at DCU, it's just the most inane, crazy stuff. So I'm just happy with MCU the way it went. Uh, he went with his gut. He played like a champion. He played like the guy I knew he is. I'm so proud of my, I just, Greg, thank you. 17-6 there, Greg. Uh, you got to be feeling good about the way you played. You you hit eight questions up top in the first round. Second round, you get Spinner's Choice. You pick MCU. You go with your gut. It pays off for you. Knockout. Don't even have to answer any questions in the next round. And uh, look, you got Kalinowski, former two-time champ. Your manager is beating him. Can you beat him? I, I guess I'll, I'll do my best now. I'll do my best. It's funny how this schmodown <laughs> fluctuates between... If I'm if I'm down here, I have confidence. If if I'm up here, I get worried. <laughs> this is constantly fluctuates for me. <laughs> so. yeah, Christian, it may not be Greg's best trash talking moment. I mean, like, <laughs> That's not my expertise here. <laughs> you're, you're going in against an all timer with Mike Kalinowski, so maybe it is best to kind of GI Joe crawl into that match. But Greg, let me ask you this because you had such a wealth of knowledge in a variety of categories. Then you obviously specialize in MCU. For the DCU question, did you have that steel? Should you? need it the character in suicide squad yeah. with fire-based abilities is uh el diablo chato santano all right so christian this guy clearly knows his stuff i'm not ready to say that mike kalinowski mm -hmm. is shaking in his boots yet because i don't think mike kalinowski has fear put in him by just about any competitor but i think greg alba certainly proved his worth if for nothing else than to be a veritable force in this tournament and in the inner geekdom going forward oh, i couldn't, couldn't be more go ahead greg uh, I want to, I mean, Warfather, it was so much fun to play with. And uh, Koi, I really got to think because like once I chose MCU, I mean, I wouldn't have made that decision without his guidance. And uh, like when the DCU questions were coming up, I was like, oh, wow, I am so happy. I went with MCU. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, Greg, yeah. that's, a, that's a good question, though, too, because you now this is your second victory of the season. You know, obviously you're playing in teams with with uh, real rejects. You guys one and one. But still, this was something playing under Koi and working with Koi inside of this uh, new structure, how has it helped both you and John working with Koi? 
Um, I mean, it's it's helped with, I often get pretty stressed out. I often get like really caught up in my head. And Koi has been, um, uh, the best way to put it, he's been an amazing emotional support. I know I'm usually like very sarcastic, uh, but I wanted to be very sincere and thank Koi because uh, I'm, I'm blessed to, to be with him, both John and I, because uh, it, it really does help with having uh, a sense of relief. I, I called him before the match, like I'm, I'm worked up and he, he constantly helps me out uh, with calming my nerves and his positive energy in my corner. And he doesn't tell me what to do, but he knows how to guide me. He's like a good therapist for the showdown. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Right. I mean, Corey, you said it best though, man. Um, you, you had your people that you picked up top. And, you know, there are some people like Mara Kanopic and Bibiani and the kid who were like, those are the ones everyone was going to focus on. Those were going to be the ones that were making the moves. Well, those three competitors haven't really seen a lot of action this season, but the real rejects certainly have. Um, <laughs> you know, this is, again, now, not only do you have Greg, you have John. Do you think John's going to put up as good of a showing as Greg did? I, I don't think I recruited an A team and a B team. It didn't matter when I drafted any of my players. Every single one of my 10 was my first round draft pick. Every single one of these people was someone that I had on a very, very short list. I only had 13 people total I wanted on my team, and I got 10 of them. So from the very beginning, they were all A-listers for me, and I'm flattered and honored they respect me as much as I respect them. It was actually really alienating being on camera for my like coaching because I felt like I that's usually offsides in a studio like this is my opinion oh my god uh, <laughs> so it felt really weird to be like oh there's a literal spotlight on my coaching <laughs> so uh it was really it was a really different animal but I I've had nothing but good experiences with each and every member of my faction and they've all played exactly like I knew they would on and off pressure and every phone call every text we're a family and it's so important to me because especially in a city like LA it's so hard to find people that you tolerate much less like yeah <laughs> Go ahead, Rick. Can I throw in one more thing? Sure. I, I, I will be, I, I don't, I have to mention this. I have to thank my girlfriend because she has put up with my cold attitude while studying these last few days <laughs> <laughs> so much. And she helped me study with asking me certain questions. So I have to thank Olivia because she has put up with me uh, this whole weekend. So. Yeah, and thank you guys for having me too. And a big shout out to Olivia. Uh, it is interesting you bring up the subject of girlfriend because uh, Koi sitting on a couch that it must be impossible to take a lady back to. Um, <laughs> Koi, I, I wanted to ask you, and I and I have a challenge for all the Smowdown fans watching this match. If you could, if you could somehow start a thread that has the best GIF of Koi's face when it appeared that there could be a knockout. Koi, do you want to give us a reenactment of? what you were doing when you saw that there could be an actual knockout in this match. What was your facial gestures like? Something like that. <laughs> Perfect. Well, you got it. You got the knockout and you got you got you got the KO and now you get KO again in the next round with Mike Kalinowski. So congratulations there, Greg. Looking forward to seeing you compete again. Corey, we'll see you really soon with John Humphreys and Janine the Machine. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. All right. I'm going to drop these guys out here, bringing back both the Warfather and <laughs> Robert Meyer Burnett. Uh, oh. Tough loss here today, my man. Burning Droogs. Uh, you know, you see yourselves here with the loss. You needed the points. You didn't get them, but you still, you know, you got another match coming up here. How would you feel about the Warfather? Well, you know, Warfather pulled out a match. His last match, his debut match for me, it was a great win. You can't, you can't win all the time. And you know what? I stand by the war father. He and I are definitely creatures of a feather. And uh, I can't wait to see him perform next. It's a tough match. There's a lot of pressure going on this this time. And you know what you got to do is you dust off those horns and you get back on the horse. You pick up your, uh, your axe and you keep fighting. That's what you do. That's right. You just pick up Schmobash. And I feel bad that Eric Zipper lost this match and that he has a <laughs> KO on his record. It's a shame. But nevertheless, he will move forward, as will I, into the singles leagues and the, all the leagues beyond. <laughs> so, so, actually, you know what, Warfather, that's something I'm glad you brought up because you have made it very clear um, both to me and uh, to your manager that singles is really where you want to to live, and inner geek is based on this appearance. Clearly, <laughs> <laughs> is this the last time we're going to see you in the inner geekdom division? You think? Well, maybe dabbler here or there. The Warfather loves the fight, no matter the battlefield.
Fair enough. Uh, I will say this. Uh, one of the things that when when we have the opportunity to get back in front of a live event, I would very much like to see you versus Brett Sheridan in a singles match. So <laughs> yes, I yeah. would, too. I'm all about that. <laughs> yeah, that'll be a great match. Yeah, Christian, the, the most challenging part about that match is you and I announcing it with a straight face. But I think we can pull it off. I think the fans are here for it. So, uh, Brett, start your training right now and get that laugh going because you have quite a mighty guffaw to equal in the War Fathers. Yeah. Oh, Gre Gre Gregarious guffaws. Ahoy! Yeah. <laughs> Burnett, before I let you go here, I got to sure. ask you a question. You got Brandon Hanna. You got Saul. Um, you know, the, the Dan Kate Mulligan ha has gotten rid of him traded him to you uh basically throwing him to the side in your words um how are you feeling about this match any words that you'd like to say to both saul and kate mulligan in the den uh right now well let me just say uh it was kate who lit this fuse kate set brandon on fire and brandon hannah i have never seen anybody more determined to prove himself and i'll tell you something it's like when Sean Connery was explaining the story of Cortez going to the New World in Hunt for Red October. When Cortez went to the New World, he burnt his ships. That way his men were properly motivated. I will tell you, Brandon Hanna, Brandon Hanna has built a bonfire that is raging. It can be seen from, from miles and miles away. And I'll tell you, this guy, I've never seen anyone more determined to prove themselves. Because if they don't, well, the alternative is shame forever. Worse than Cersei Lannister walking through the streets of, of King's Landing, let me tell you. But I have faith. I have faith that Brandon Hanna is going to show us something. Well, as Care Dulé said in 2010, something wonderful. Oop, I got rid of my accent. All right. Well, there he is, Burnett and Warfather. Big words there for the faction. We're going to be able to see that really soon. But... For the Warfather, unfortunately, in the Inner Geekdom Division right now, his journey ends. I'd like to thank you guys for joining us here today, both the Warfather and Robert Meyer Burnett. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, Mark, that's it. We got ourselves the tournament. It is set now. The play-in matches are over. We have a full tournament, and there is the bracket as it stands today. And we will see Greg Alba go up against Mike the Killer Kalinowski in the first round. That's right, Christian. Now, in years past, there was this thing called March Madness, and it was a 64-team tournament. They did have play-in games, and I'd get excited to watch the play-in games. It felt like a tournament atmosphere, but it really started in earnest that first Thursday of Madness. And I think that, Christian, now the brackets are set. We're ready to rumble. This is going to be one hell of an inner geekdom tournament coming up. I just hope that my forehead and my armpits can sustain the heat. That is right. No, And look. When you bring in, and who knows, let's see what the real rejects can do in Inner Geekdom, because to be completely honest, I think a lot of people were counting them out. People know that they could do jokes, and people know that they were nice guys, but could they? And their team's matches have been good. And I think even they said, they think they were like something like two and six, you know, that you would never, you always want to watch them play, but you never know if they're going to win. When you look at Greg Albin, the way he played today, that's somebody that, can hang in the inner geekdom division so that's a little scary if you're mike kalinowski if you're any of these players it's like oh wait a minute was i underestimating this guy oh damn it now i gotta wake up and now i gotta play because here he is and here that's the faction standings of today look at the rankings you can always find all of these updated standings if you go to the schmodownlive.com the quirky mercs as you see they are picking up a big three points and helping themselves in the standings Christian, to borrow a phrase from one of Warfather's incorrect answers, you got it, dude. Well, thank you so very much, Mark Stearns Ellis. Appreciate everything that you've done here today for us, my friend. Thank you to our great team, our production team, to everyone working behind the scenes, obviously, and for you guys. Make sure that you comment, click like. The Inner Geekdom Tournament is every Thursday and every Friday on the YouTube channel. However, the Star Wars Tournament is still going on. You can check that out on twitch.tv slash the Schmodown. Go on over there. Follow us today. Make sure that you do that. And don't, also, don't forget, you can get the matches, for some of the matches, the Thursday match, little early if you go to patreon patreon.com slash schmodown become a patron today all right mark for mark ellis and christian harlow we'll see you next time